Hello everybody. Thanks for checking this out today. Um, coming to you from my new home office here in Denver. So if the background looks a little bit different, that's why. Um, I hopefully, at least my plan, is to definitely be creating many more videos on YouTube. Um, especially now that I've got a space here that is more conducive to doing so. So I'm going to be doing that. Uh, I'm going to play a little bit of this music in the background for a moment. And uh, then we get to talking. This is one of my songs. Um, really, I shouldn't say one of mine. It is one of a joint effort through Jerry Hunt, myself, Andrew Duncanson, and Ed Kobeck on the drums. Uh, we recorded this little instrumental a few years back. All this music, all of my music is on Bandcamp. I never say these things. I don't share a lot um, about material or what, what's available or what I do. I just assume that everyone knows these things. But here's a little song called La Rumba de la Casa Roja. It's on a B-flat harmonica, I believe. Good morning. So there's a little taste of a little cross harmonica. <clears throat> yeah, the Rocket Amp is a great tight air harmonica. Airtight, I should say, harmonica. For those that don't know what a Rocket Amp is, that's a Rocket Amp. No side vents. It's like a rocket. So. If you want to check out all of my music, download stuff, you can always just go to ronnieshellist.bandcamp.com. And you can find um, my entire digital discography available there. Uh, maybe not the entire, but you can find four pieces of work. So going live today, why? Well, why not? Um, we're almost at the top of the year. I want to share some cool things happening. First of all, if you don't know it, Maybe you're not subscribed to my newsletter at Harmonica123. Um, if not, why not subscribe to this channel right now and then subscribe to my newsletter so you can get killer deals right in your inbox and find out where I'm gonna be as I travel. Um, right now I'm offering a huge sale, so I'm just gonna mention it quickly. Um, I'm offering half off, 50% off of all my flash drives. Uh, if you don't know what a flash drive is, this is what a flash drive is, everybody. Um, these, I know that most people are aware of what this is, but you put digital content on these. I load these with my instructional material, backing tracks, different packages of things you can buy. And then I mail them to you so you can stick it in your computer, bring it onto your computer, save it there, or just have it as a backup and for on the go. A lot of these are audio lessons, but a lot of them are video lessons. So you can check those out. With this one, I hate when these things disappear so fast. I have to learn how to get better at this. All right, um, I'll find that that thing that just popped up, that comment. Um, so you can go to harmonica123.com, right on the homepage, and check it out. Uh, we can talk about phrasing today. We're gonna get into some cool stuff. I'm I'm in, I'm totally into just chatting today and taking some questions for sure. Um, so check out that deal. I only do it once a year, and it's good from now until the end of the year. Blues licks lessons, blues thematic lessons in general. You can check out all the details by clicking on the individual packages, um, backing tracks, my music, etc. So that's one thing. I will, and also I have a new lesson. Maybe today I can give you some free information from that lesson. Yeah, the Honor Marine Band crossovers, they're great. I'm not sure what you asked me, but I think, yeah, I have those. I play i play everything, you guys. I'm playing the crossovers, the Marine Bands, the Deluxes, uh, the Rocket, Rocket Low, uh, Rocket Amp, Special 20s. I honestly play everything except for Golden Melody, which is temper, equal temperament, with the tuning is very different on the chords on those. Um, 
So my new lesson pattern recognition is available for 12 bucks and that's on sale to the end of the year. Um, 20% off. How do you get these codes, these discount codes? Let me just mention that. Um, the discount codes are available on the site. You can read it for yourself, but like um, the discount code to get 20% off of that uh, new lesson is Harp Freak 20, all capital letters. You just put it in at checkout. And then the one for the flash drive is Flash 50, all capital letters, Flash 50, all together. Um, so that's a little bit. Maybe, like I said, I'll give away some of these exercises today and just share with you some of the content that's on that new lesson, Pattern Recognition. Remind me if I forget. How do I see messages on this thing? Live chat. All messages are, vi yeah, they're visible, but they go away. Oh, there they are. I just have to touch the screen. I can play guitar and Pentatonic on Blisco. With this in mind, what advice can you give me? Why must you fade away so fast? Um, and hello to everybody saying hello. First blues harp. Pentatonic blues go. With that in mind, what advice can I give you? To, to transfer what you know. Here's the advice for beginning the harp. Learn how to breathe right. Learn how to, how to get a single note clean. And apply what you've learned in the guitar, on the guitar. Apply that to the harmonica. Anybody that plays the guitar that's getting into the harmonica should be thinking about that. So take your uh, skill work and just ear train some of your basic skill work, for example. Now, you're not gonna be able to do it exactly the same. Do I have a G? Of course I have a G harmonica. Hey, what's up, Joe? Uh, yeah, you may not be able to find all these scale. <laughs> God, you guys are coming up with the most interesting comments. Let me think about that one. Um, you might have to bend notes to get the scale to come out right. So your first task might be Breathing correctly, single notes, and then moving on to how do I start to bend a note? Because the minor third is, is a flatted note on the harmonica. This is a, an A harmonica. There's a lot of notes that we have to bend the note to get it. So first step is start to transfer some of the knowledge. Get some basic technique. Breathe right. Breathe from your diaphragm. Um... Yeah, funniest harmonica related story you got me. I could think, I don't know. I'm gonna have to think about that. And we could talk about phrasing today. Maybe we should connect the idea of talking about phrasing right now with um, this pattern recognition lesson that I've created. And like I said, I'm happy to give away some free exercises today during this live stream. Just to give you an idea of what's on it. Um, I created this lesson, it's all audio with a PDF handout that allows you to follow along the written tablature. Uh, I thought it was important to include tablature for a lesson like this. Hey, Brent. So for those of you that have already purchased the, um, the lesson, you know what I'm talking about. But basically, I've created these patterns that came up over and over and over in my playing. And I created exercises, exercises out of them. When holding it without a guitar, how do you hold it? You hold it like this. I could tell I'm going to be sidetracked, which is totally fine today. Getting in and out of a solo in a jam setting. Okay, we can talk about that. Somebody should be taking notes. Maybe me. Okay, I'm going to write these down. Phrasing. Pattern recognition which we're doing now but we'll bring it back to phrasing what are the best audio tracks to practice along with i mean i've got plenty of tracks at the website go to harmonica123.com and go to the search feature up top right where the little magnifying glass is and type in um let's make sure i'm correct i'm on my site right now type in backing backing which which is like backing tracks You'll see I have an Ultimate Blues Jam package. You can download, that's 30 tracks. My CD till then is available in download format. There's like eight or nine tracks, which would be really cool, right? 
acoustic jam tracks. There's 20 of those. Check it out. That's what I recommend. So let's just knock out this question. I'm kind of curious to do this. Somebody asked, well, what's your advice for getting in and out of a solo in a jam setting? Like you're out at a jam and uh, you don't want to, what's the word? You want to be able to just do what you do quickly, do it well. Yeah, thanks a lot for that, Eric. Well, email me, whoever, you, was that Dwayne? Email me about that, ronnieshellist at gmail.com. <laughs> you know, that's a fair question about harmonicas being set up. I'll talk about that in a minute. Dang it, you guys, these are great questions. However, somebody asked the, the question about how to, how to the best position, hold it like this, and make sure when you're thinking about position look this applies to a rack player too but especially if you're not playing rack because you can get this embouchure right you've got to get your lips if you're not tongue blocking tongue blocking automatically puts you in the correct position to get good tone and night and a nice embouchure going for the note because you can't seal it off right without getting the position right puckering not true let me explain this if you're a pucker player which i'm definitely a hybrid player i use pucker then I could play a crappy single note on the outside of the harmonica. Real thin tone. And higher likelihood of hitting another note next to it, another hole. So if that's you, you don't have the harmonica far enough in your lips. Get the lips over the harp. And then form your seal from, from, the, from the back forward. Make sense? Like put it all in your mouth and then start to get that seal. Okay, that's my advice on that. Getting in and out of the jam. So you're at a jam setting, you get a solo, you want to, you don't want to, uh, you want to highlight yourself best as possible. My suggestion is pay attention. <laughs> Listen carefully what's going on. Make sure it's your turn to solo. Usually that's done with eye contact or, you know, a nod or they're pointing at you or whatever. And then... The biggest question you have to ask is how long am I going to play? Uh, maybe not the biggest, but in a jam setting, if you're unsure, always cut your solo short. You can always give it away or give go around once. But if you're really feeling it and that 12 bars is about to end, you might just open an eye and look over but not stop playing as if to say, I'm not done. Can I keep going? And if they're not walking to the mic to sing the next verse or looking for the next person to pass off to, that might be a great opportunity to continue. Keep your ideas short and simple, leave space, put your volume in check, don't be too loud or too quiet. Do I play exclusively in Richter tuning? Pretty much. Why not play the blues on a chromatic? I definitely do. Um, most gigs I pick up the chromatic for one or two songs. You can do that. So keep your solos, your ideas, leave space, execute a nice simple idea, focus on the feel, make your attention not on what notes will I play next or what riff, but how will this feel? How can I shape the sound and the tone? And that's my advice for just um, doing well, getting in and out in a jam setting. You might even, like I said, cut your solo short of the 12 bar ending so that you're not playing up to the last, you know, If I go all the way to the end of the 12 bars, including the turnaround, I don't leave any space for that guy to get on the mic and start singing the next verse very cleanly. So I might knock out the turnaround, practice the art of leaving out the turnaround, um, at least the last bar, let's say, or half of, a, half of the lap measure 12. And that really allows for more space. I do play Rector tune, which is the standard way most harmonicas are tuned, you know, but um, I have some alternate tunings. I don't really play them out, I'll admit, other than low tunings. I mean, I'm a honer. I endorse honer harmonicas, so of course I believe that those are the best harmonicas out there, and I really appreciate many models that they make. Um, any manufacturer that's out there mass-producing harmonicas has the possibility of, of setting up a harmonica well out of the box or having it come out kind of off. 
I know this because I've played them all. And if you don't believe me, I, I mean, all I can tell you is trust my experience of playing these instruments uh, almost 25 years. And many have out of the box been great. Many have just needed adjustments. And this goes for all major brands that I've seen. And some periods of time were better and worse than others. Yeah, the Rocket's a great setup on that harmonica. So, you know, there were times that people were buying harmonicas and saying, you know, something's really off. And, you know, that can happen. Manufacturers can have that happen, but then they can make adjustments to correct it. So I've noticed that as of lately in the last few years or so, every harmonica I'm getting from owner, um, practically everyone has been a joy to play. They're airtight. I'm not having somebody set these up ahead of time. I just want to be clear. I'm playing them out of the box. Rocket lows are really airtight. The crossovers, special 20s. So I play them all out. I mean, if you look at uh, my harps, it's a mix of different harmonicas. Let's, let me give you some free information and then I'll talk about some other events. And if you're like, I got to get out of here, then check back on this video to hear about some of these other events like the Global Blues Harmonica Summit coming February 9th. I'll talk about that in a minute. You can go to blowyourharp.com to get information on that um, and sign up. I've got Rob Paparossi and uh, PT Gazelle joining. So I'm really excited they're teaching this summit. Um, the Rocky Mountain Harmonica Retreat in May up in Winter Park is taking place again. It's filling up quickly. Um, Oh, yeah, the Hunter Thunderbird. Why is it so much more expensive? And also, I'm going to talk about the Edinburgh, Scotland Harmonica Workshop in July of 2019. I'm headed to Scotland. All right. First time abroad teaching harmonica, so I'm excited about that. I'm going to tell you more about it. I've got links in the video description. Thunderbirds are more expensive, by the way, because the parts... The, the bamboo is more expensive than plastic, for starters. Um, the way that they have treated the... I want to say the milling. I don't want to use the wrong term. The process to set up those reeds is different. The... I believe possibly even... I, I want to just say the setup is different. Keep in mind on a Thunderbird, they've... Um, they have what's called a conical design. And that means that the one draw... Below the cover plate on a Thunderbird on a one draw, it's it's got a little space for that reed. It's but it's kind of rounded out. Joe Felisco was uh, the genius who came up with this invention to to change the cover plate to accommodate the swing of the low reed on the one. So that's an extra step um, in the design process. And I want to say just the setup is slightly different on the Thunderbird. I like them both a lot, but I, I want, I'm here to tell you, and it's not just because my face is on the box of the Rocket Low. It has to do with the fact that the harmonica plays great. I love the Rocket Low. Yeah, 9 and 10 are great holes to work. Um, so... I just want to say that if you haven't tried a rocket low and you're on a budget, don't be afraid to try those. Pick a focus, I say. No reason you can't learn a little on both in the beginning, but pick a focus. I don't know that it will help you, no. I think that in the long run it would, but I think that if you're going to... The question was, I'm a beginning diatonic player, should I start doing some chromatic... Yeah, the Rocket Low is great. So, no, I would say stick with the diatonic. And then when you've got a good base or foundation going, bring in some of the chromatic work. What's up? Um, so I'm going to give away some exercises here. Let's just do one. What does that say? Dang, this little feature. Uh, these th comments come quick. Getting a nice sustained sound on the blow bends is a challenge. 
yeah, it could just just be your technique most likely. Practice it on a G and, an, and maybe an A harp. No lower than that. Increase the airflow a little bit and really focus on the tongue position up and forward. Uh, we could talk about the possibility of me signing a harp. Um, I've had a few people write to me to do that in the past. Um, it's a little bit challenging. Maybe reach out to me an email and we can figure something out. I'm happy to try to make you guys happy for sure because you guys are my support system. Um, and I want to do that. So, all right. I know there's been a lot of questions that have flown by, but I keep getting sidetracked and I want to give you this information. Check it out. Let's do it on a C harmonic and most people have a C. One of the first things you're going to come across on this lesson is getting accuracy uh, so playing repeated notes, these octave notes that move across the harmonica. There's many of them that are just on draw and blow notes, and I would start with those. That means two draw, six blow, and nine blow. Lips off the harmonica. Lips off. You don't want a glissando, that defeats the purpose. That could be a separate exercise. What you're working on is landing right on these notes. That way you're learning, you're ear training where they lie, where, where are these notes on the harmonica? And can I get there accurately and cleanly, okay? And you might work one blow, four blow, seven blow, ten blow. And, and both directions. And if you're having problems, let's say you go and you miss it. Use that opportunity to just do maybe 7 and 10. Okay, and then 1 draw, 4 draw, 8 draw. See how that one was dirty? Slow down and make sure you find your rhythm to get that accurately. 2 blow, 5 blow. Sorry, eight blow. You can do octaves, you know. Okay. Then it gets really interesting. So when you're practicing these things, at first you're like, okay, I could see the value, but maybe you're getting bored. Well, you won't get so bored when you get to the bent notes unless you're really proficient at bending. This has changed my playing so much, and I mean tremendously recently in the last two three years even I'm gonna say that I've I have found that these X running through these regularly I do all of the stuff I share in this lesson pattern recognition are things that I practice all the time because they have become fun they're just fun little things that I enjoy doing um, but look at six draw Redraw full step then. Six bent half step down. Three draw step and a half. Uh, five draw is the same as two draw full step then. And so on. You're finding these repeating notes and you're working them. It's 10 draw, we didn't include that. Six draw, 10 draw. So you go through and you work these. I'm gonna give you one other exercise from that in just a moment. Um, I wanna mix this up, but uh, what, what's happening at the Global Blues Harmonica Summit this year? This coming year, sorry. February 9th. First of all, these guys are amazing players, teachers, people. I've known Rob and PT Gazelle for years, Rob Paparossi and PT Gazelle, they're just really good down to earth guys that happen to be amazing musicians. Now Rob, you might know from the Blues Brothers. He travels all over the world with the Blues Brothers band um, and another really big band before that that's escaping me the name of it. He's an international artist, he plays um, with the best jazz artists, rock bands. I mean, he's a, he is a true uh, musician's musician, or however you want to phrase it. 
it's the harmonica is nothing more than a, a vehicle for him to express. He plays piano. What I love about Rob is that he plays across many genres, which is the whole essence of what we wanted to do for this summit was give you a perspective on how you can approach many different styles outside of the blues. So yeah, we're going to focus on some jazz and other position work outside of first, second, and third position. And you're going to get some of that from P.T. Gazelle. But he's going to talk about his experience on the stage. Um, I don't have any experience with the one hole over blow. Um, <laughs> you guys are funny. Shane, what's up, man? Um, low B flat. Yeah, I probably do somewhere. I don't know if I have my other bag in here. I don't know where all my stuff is, you guys. I am just moved. All right, so check out Rob. Check out PT Gazelle. Check out BlowYourHarp.com. You're going to learn how, different angles for mastering uh, your bends. You're going to learn about learning a standard, a jazz tune. Um, I know that um, PT Gazelle is going to touch on fifth position minor as an alternative for third position. You may not realize you want it, but I promise you, even if you're a hardcore blues guy, these topics are the kind of topics that have made me, as a blues harmonica, a blues-focused harmonica player, a much better blues harmonica player in general, an improviser, an all-around player, because learning the positions has opened up my ability to express different phrasing, which we didn't talk about. We should do that. Um, so it's just been tremendous for me to explore a lot of what they're gonna talk about, the importance of mastering bends. Um, and Rob is gonna talk about incorporating both diatonic and chromatic into your playing, um, commanding your role on stage, singing and playing tips, ornamentation, so adding notes uh, to the main melody, etc. Check it out. All right. Um, Phrasing. Let's just, I mean, this is a hard topic to just jump into. Yeah, you definitely want to have your harmonica set up for that one overblow, but it's not something I have experience with. Um, let me just make this comment about overblowing. Since I, it's my channel, I guess I can give my opinion. Overblowing can be a wonderful technique, can be a really useful and important, uh, necessary technique to get and achieve missing notes in the scale. It raises the pitch. Even when harmonicas are set up perfectly for overblowing and overdrawing, or overbending as it can be referred to, not to be confused with blow bending, which is not an overblow. Um, even when it's set up perfectly, you can struggle with, with this technique. It's really advanced. And not only can you struggle, but it might be a distasteful sound, a sound that um, for many years until you finesse it and get it right, just sounds horrible. So, proceed with caution. If you want to take on this technique of learning overblows, I recommend you have a reason, a clear vision and understanding of why you want to do it. Like, I'm learning world music or jazz melodies or uh, melodies that just simply require in this octave me to overblow. Well, that makes a lot of sense. I get that. But for those guys that just want to learn it, I say master everything else first. Really make sure you've mastered things like this. Things like that are more valuable. These are some of the exercises that I give away on the... Uh, pattern recognition exercise or lesson it, because if you can master your bent notes they give you more mileage out of the musical expression there's more going on that's available right in front of you with the bent notes and the and quite frankly the notes are, themselves are more important notes in the context of blues and a lot of roots music country rock folk so there's my argument i'm not discouraging people from learning overblowing i'm just saying make sure you have a good instrument to do it on, it's set up for it, and you really have a goal that's in line with overblowing. All right, phrasing. Want to get into really good phrasing? No matter what the position work, think about 
counting space, counting rests in music, and understanding that once the, the art of mastering that, I think, and I know I'm not suggesting that I have, but um, which is too difficult to respond. Yeah, that's true. The, the thing that I've noticed about phrasing is that once you've really come closer to mastering it, let's say, you get really good at it, it, it ends up coming down to not thinking about counting space or rests. But because you've been aware of altering and changing up this, the, the resp in your music, you then can just subconsciously make these decisions to get in and out quickly, right there. The space between those two riffs, while they're connected, was very quick, right? God, I can't move this up. Yeah, cool. Right on, man. Those are really cool, the chromatic octaves. So you might start counting arbitrarily two Bs. And just call and response. And then next time, only one beat. And then maybe three and a half. You know, you're trying to get creative with it. And the more you can just slip in and out and change the rests between your ideas, the space when you're not playing, naturally you're developing phrasing because you're not just randomly going and just randomly starting. You're kind of being conscious at first about making the selection of to, to pause a certain amount of time and let that space move by without playing. But later, because you've trained that way, you'll be playing and you just realize that emotionally there's signals as to how long you should wait. And I guess emotional, emotionally speaking, just for me, I, I mean, music is the ability to express emotionally. So it's, I'm thinking about what I'm trying to express. And sometimes I need to get back in quickly and sometimes I need a long dramatic pause. So it really depends. Um, I'm working my way through this, you guys. July 19th through 21st in 2019, I'm going to Scotland. I mentioned it. I'm going to be joining Lee Sankey, Tomlin Leckie, and Liam Ward. Um, there's only 80 tickets for sale, and apparently over half the spots have already been filled. And it's over six months away, seven months out. So if you're in and around the area or you want to head over to Scotland, come on over and check out the link in the video description for that. There will be workshops, jam sessions, performances, social hang time. It's going to be a blast. Now, <laughs> how about we do something a little loose here? Any, anybody ask something that I totally ignored? I know I did, so I'm paying attention now. Dude, you, I know, right? You should come to Scotland. Why not? And Shane, I hope to see you up in the mountains because those spaces are filling up fast. A lot of my regulars like to come back to the Rocky Mountain Retreat and they occupy these spaces quickly. They know the deal that when it goes on sale, they snatch it up fast. I have a feeling this will be filled before January's out. The event will be filled. And I'm only doing one this year up in Winter Park. And hell yeah, come to Scotland, Shane. Anybody else for that matter? Um, until somebody has a question, here's a little first position blues in A. <laughs> There's no major story, I'll tell you in a minute.
the story behind the harmonica behind me, which was mistaken for a coat rack for many years because I had videos where it was hang it was up on something and people thought it was a coat rack. I should probably design that a coat rack. Um, thanks, Kevin. Um, let me think about that. Um, it is just a display harmonica that music stores used to get once upon a time. And it's got a string that comes out. And you can hang it. But you can't play it. There's no reeds in it. It's just a big piece of plastic. But it looks just like a, a harmonica. It's got the numbers and everything. So that's the whole story. My buddy was, he owned a small music shop. And when he closed the doors, he gave me the harmonica. That was... Over, well over a decade ago. I was like 15 years ago or maybe even 20 years ago. <laughs> Albums for first position? Is that what you said, Shane? I think that's what you said. I don't know. Um, any particular albums you would recommend listening to? I mean, all of Mitch's stuff is going to be great, but as far as other players, everyone's got great first position. Kim Wilson's got great first position tunes on, his, on a lot of his recordings. Like, Trust My Baby, if you're not studying that. I'm guessing you've heard that. And then Gary Primich. Um, I can't remember which tunes are the classic first position ones. Big Walter Horton. You know what I mean? They've all, uh, Sonny Boy, they've all, it's a matter of identifying the songs. And you ask for albums, you know. There's probably in a harmonica forum somewhere a list of killer first position songs, which would be a good way to go. And then go to Spotify and figure make a Spotify list or however, if you want to download them. Um, what's cool is first position is always put into a box, like what we just did. Um, playing it in a slow blues is very common. But you know what? Take a G harp, you play this little stuff right here. Swing, funk, box pattern, all these different kinds. Straight ahead, medium shuffle, Chicago blues. First position should be explored on all of that kind of stuff. So I highly recommend you guys. And if you don't know what first position is, it's just playing the same key harmonica as the music that's being played. And learning some simple scale work that goes along with that first position would help you. Um... What else can I tell you? I think I've got to go now because I just realized what time it is. I've got to prep for something at 1 p.m. here in Denver, Colorado. Um, reach out to me if you guys want to connect with me one-on-one. -on -one. Maybe consider a private harmonica lesson. You can email me at ronnieshellist at gmail.com and we can get a game plan together. A lot of times I'm working with people who think they aren't ready for lessons. What does that mean? Guys, you can't prepare for a lesson, really. You can't think about that. Like, people want to prepare and say, I'm not ready, I'm not good enough to work with you. I want to get more out. Maybe starting with me early on is helps you will help you form good habits and break bad ones so that you, we can build off that. Um, sometimes lessons are about getting a game plan. Sometimes they are about working drills and technique, song studies, conversation where we just talk about stuff going on or issues there's many different ways that i work with students so consider that have a great new year happy new year to everybody out there i hope you've been enjoying yourself uh, and getting ready for a killer 2019 i promise you 
that I will be active coming live from this office much more than you've seen me in the past. I can guarantee it. So thanks for tuning in today. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. And um, I'm sure I missed a bunch of questions that flew by. And if you really want to ask me something, you can always email me at that ronnieshells at gmail.com. You can um, use info at harmonica123.com. Check out the sale. The flash drives are on sale this weekend and then it's done. 50% off, free shipping in the U.S., $10 for international shipping. So if you live outside of the U.S., just add $10 to that price, and that's what you get invoiced after you buy it. You can also consider um, downloading the downloadable version of any of those packages. I should have made that a sale item too. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll do that. Uh, and that's all I got today. I really appreciate you guys supporting and also joining me live here today. I hope to see you at the next one really soon. If you have ideas you want to submit for upcoming videos, again, just shoot me an email on social media on Facebook or um, private message on social media or any email at ronnieshellist at gmail.com. And I hope to see you somewhere. Oh, what's up, Mark? I'm glad I caught that last minute, last minute comment. All right, you guys, go enjoy the day.